how can I get rid of them? I've right. got too many microplastics in my body. How do I get rid of them? Yeah. So microplastics, we kind of talked about a little bit getting rid of them and that really the main source is excretion through feces and that happens with dietary fiber. So if you are eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, that does increase the chances that microplastics are going to move their way out through feces. Is that readily. only microplastics that you're consuming along with it? Or is it able to pull microplastics deep sort of detoxify them from your body? I think it's I think it's in general, to be honest, because if you think about like fiber, what does it do? It moves stuff through your body. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that you just ate, right? Like it could be something that you had hours before. So if you're getting like fiber, daily fiber, right? Like thinking about getting your total daily fiber, I think that's something that is important because it's moving the, it's moving it out of your body so you can't absorb it through both ways like the the ways of just moving it through but also in, you know with the type of fiber that's found in things like you know berries and apples so these are pectins like inulin all this all this type of fermentable fiber green bananas resistant starch like that stuff makes viscous gel like substance in your gut which encapsulates microplastics so that you're not absorbing them mm. so really i think it's just like m more important to focus on the daily fiber intake versus mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. with a meal so is that the the biggest mover daily fiber intake do you think i do and this is all animal data like there's this is all new there's no real human data yet on on that Mm -hmm. area in terms of like excreting it through feces and absorption intestinal absorption um but i do think like it's it, it makes sense like it, why wouldn't it translate right so um that's something that i think is important oh the other thing this just came out this is interesting also animal data so forever chemicals i mentioned forever chemicals those take two to five years to excrete to get rid of i say excrete to t detoxify get out of your body they mm -hmm. stay in your body forever that's why they're called forever chemicals um Unlike bisphenol A, which is it has it's in your in your body for like up to four or five hours, you know, any from two to five hours. So it's, so it's really kind of daily excretion, and it's excreted through urine. But there's studies showing that the they're called um, beta glucans, and they're in oats and they're in mushrooms. But the study used oats. The beta glucans, which is by the way a fermentable type of uh, fiber, they were they actually caused excretion of the forever chemicals PFAS in animals which is something that n doesn't happen so they increase the ex um, excretion through it's this whole mechanism that affects like your 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 liver or your your bile acid and liver and cholesterol and all this like fancy stuff that you know might be confusing to explain but mm -hmm. essentially that's been shown to ex um, increase the excretion of forever chemicals so I've actually been adding a lot of um, oats in fact I had some oatmeal this morning because I'm like, oh my gosh, this isn't incredible. Like, the reason why I also think it's happening in humans is because there was a human study, not with oats, um, but it was it's a drug that's used to lower cholesterol, and it does the exact same thing that oats, the beta, the beta glucans and oats do. It was shown to clear forever chemicals in people. Wow. So I'm like, oh, okay. Add the dots here. What about sauna? Sauna. So sauna. Um, so I'm talking about excreting things um, through through urine or feces, right? So, so bisphenol A and a lot of these plastic chemicals, the primary route of excretion is through urine. And there is a way, I think, that we can excrete them. Sauna, you're excreting mostly, is through sweat. And there are a lot of toxins that we're exposed to that we do excrete through sweat. A lot of those are heavy metals. So, for example, um, cadmium and aluminum. So aluminum is associated with Alzheimer's disease they are more readily excreted through sweat than through urine. And so when you get in the sauna, you really you can you can excrete a little bit of BPA. It does it does come out through sweat as well. However, the majority of excretion um, chemicals that are being excreted through sweat are things like some heavy metals and mm -hmm. things like that. So that um, is important for excretion of a lot of, you know, compounds that are detrimental to health. But when it comes to BPA, for example, or phthalates, so the way so they the these compounds are they're fat soluble and in order for us to get rid of them we have to make them water soluble. And there's an enzyme that does that. And that enzyme is activated by a system in our body called the NRF2 system. It's a system that's a major transcription factor that basically turns on a lot of genes, turns off a lot of genes. So what it does is it activates something called the phase 2 detoxification enzymes. These detox a lot of harmful compounds in our body. The major dietary activator of this system 
is a compound called sulforaphane, which is something that you can produce when you eat cruciferous vegetables like broccoli. Broccoli um, is a good source. Actually, the younger plant broccoli sprouts have a hundred times more of the precursor to make sulforaphane called glucoraphanin. Um, so you basically, the sulforaphane compound is made when the plant is like broken. So when you bite it, chew it, right? That's when you start to make the sulforaphane. So broccoli sprouts have a really, really high concentration of that precursor. There have been a variety of studies that um, have looked at sulforaphane and giving it to humans and it, it activating this system and causing the excretion of harmful compounds that we breathe in. So there have been studies in China where air pollution is terrible and people are breathing in, for example, benzene. Okay, Benzene is a known carcinogen. It's also, in addition to air pollution, it's found in cigarette smoke, any plant burning material, fires, right? So this is very relevant to people like in Southern California and Los Angeles, where there's a lot of wildfires and the air quality is very bad. There's benzene in the air. Okay, mm. Benzene is a carcinogen. So there have been studies in China, more than one study, showing that consuming sulforaphane about, it's like 40, about 40 micromoles of sulforaphane causes the excretion of benzene to increase within 24 hours by 60%. So this is really big. You can't supplement sulforaphane? You, you can, and I do supplement with it. So um, I take a supplement called Avmacol, and that supplement has been used in a lot of different clinical studies because it's very it's a it they've got a very reliable source of glucoraphanin and the and the enzyme myrosinase is very unstable it's sensitive to heat mm. so if you heat broccoli up really hot you're actually like degrading a lot of the sulforaphane that you're going to Oh so make. if someone's eating broccoli raw would be optimal optimal or just lightly lightly cooked like mm -hmm. like lightly cooked so this company has been very delicate with how they've they, yeah they they um they've got so i what i i take two of their advanced advanced avmacol which has about gosh it's like 68 micromoles or something per per tablet and so it only so actually taking one tablet of that was equivalent to the study on benzene excretion so i take two tablets a day mm -hmm. and the reason i do that is because i also want to increase glutathione which is a antioxidant a very powerful antioxidant in our body there have been clinical studies showing that people taking sulforaphane increase their glutathione levels in their plasma and also in their brain. So in the brain, I mean, it's it, it it's hugely important for cognitive function, for brain aging, everything like that. So I take anywhere between two to four Avmacols a day because that's, and by the way, I have no affiliation with them. Their, um, their stabilization process is really great. It's in a tablet form versus like a capsule. So capsules are cheaper to make, but they retain water and water degrades the myros myrosinase yeah. enzyme. So lots Dancing of through this minefield is basically impossible, isn't it? it there's a lot to consider. Um, but when it comes back to the sulforaphane and BPA, there's not direct evidence, human evidence that it's ca causing the excretion. I think it's doing it because one, there's an animal study showing that if you give animals sulforaphane and then give them a toxic level of BPA, it doesn't induce tox toxicity. Two, sulforaphane activates these very enzymes that cause BPA to become water soluble and excreted. Mm -hmm. That's known. Three, we have all this this you know data, human clinical data showing that sulforaphane causes the excretion of other harmful compounds that also have to be converted to be water soluble, like benzene and aquiline, for example. So I think there's a lot of evidence suggesting that sulforaphane would help with excretion of BPA. You touched on something there. I don't know whether you've got any advice or whether you'd feel comfortable, but a lot of people will have been directly impacted by the fires in LA or indirectly just by it's happened around them. They've been more stressed and they've been breathing in this air, which presumably is still probably going to be in the local ecology. Is there anything, how worried do you think that people should be about what's been liberated into the air? And if you were someone that's been worried, is there a particular protocol or some things that you would consider over the next few weeks and months to try and just help yourself get back to a good place of health? I do. And, you know, I have um, several friends that have been, you know, impacted by the the LA fires and I've kind of talked to them about some of this stuff. So um, first I've, I've, you know, avoiding going outside or wearing a mask if you're like there in the thick of it, right? When it's like really, really bad air quality. But um, having a HEPA filter inside, one. 
um, and two, the sulforaphane. So I've I've now told several friends that they should be taking um, Avmacol. Again, I don't have any affiliation with them. They just there's multiple clinical studies using their formulation, very reliable. And um, so, you know, taking anywhere between two to four a day to in- in- increase the excretion of all, a lot of these harmful compounds that are in the air. Now. That's not going to cause you like the microplastics that you're breathing in. You're not going to sulforaphane isn't going to help with that. It's going to help with the chemical aspects of it. The microplastics themselves, like because plastics are burning and lots of stuff, particulate matters in the air. That's where you get the HEPA filters. That's important um, to help with the the breathing in that air, right? So 